You might have seen this video by Bob Proctor called The Law of Vibration. And I think the law of vibration is somewhat misrepresented and it's made out to be this kind of law of attraction where what you think about gets attracted. And I think a lot of this is a lie. Now in this video, I thought I would share what I think the real law of vibration or attraction is, as well as one other law that nobody tends to talk about. What's up guys, Alex Hine here. So before we jump in, there's a free worksheet below this video, the first link below, to help you figure out how to have the best year ever of your life and what daily rituals and actions are gonna help you get there. So you can check it out right below this video. Now, I think there are two missing pieces to achievement in life. The first is, sure, the law of vibration, if you wanna call it that, or resonance. But the second one is the law of action. Now, I like to think of the law of vibration as the law of consciousness. So when people say like attracts like, for example, if you don't think you can get that girl or that guy, that's your state of consciousness, and so you're probably never even gonna to try to ask them out. Or, if you do get them, you might self-sabotage the relationship. That's how I think about the law of vibration and consciousness. The second one is the law of action, meaning there are some things that no matter what you do to your mind, will never happen. You will never reverse diabetes with your mind without changing what you eat, for example. So let's talk about these two more. I like to think of the law of vibration as the law of upper limits because what happens is we tend to match things in our life based on our state of consciousness. Now I've shared David Hawkins' you know, consciousness spectrum before, but I wanna give some plain layman's examples of what I see in day-to-day -day life. And I've also coached hundreds of people. So let me point out a few examples. One, you tend to date people you think you can get. That's a state of consciousness or psychology, for sure. And a lot of the time you don't try, right? And there's that saying that the 10 in the bar is being asked out a lot less than all the other eights because just fear. People don't think they can get that. The second is that you tend to take risks you think you will succeed at. So people, for example, are not likely to write a book unless they know it will succeed or to apply for a job unless they think they will remotely get it or to ask out that person or to take that trip unless they know it's mostly safe. So that is a state of consciousness as well. The third is that you try things in general, when you think it's possible. So that's a reiteration of number two. Most of the time, if you don't think it's possible, you won't try. And therefore, you've placed an artificial upper limit on your career, your job, who you date or who you marry, the experiences and the achievements that you have. The fourth is that you tend to feel most comfortable around your current state of consciousness, including people. I think most people tend to have friends at their state of consciousness or lower. Like, do you feel better being around Men or women that are significantly more attractive, more successful, more engaging, more charming than you? Probably not. That's intimidating to most people. Most of us like to stay with people, frankly, at our level or below because it doesn't stir up anything internally. We know we're at about the same level and no one intimidates anyone else. That's the state of psychology, emotions, and consciousness. So I think about the law of vibration as being the law of upper limits because most often your state of consciousness is the inner mirror for what you do externally, right? And so what happens is that becomes an upper limit, a glass ceiling. Now, the second thing, the second law that no one talks about for some reason is the law of action. And that is very simple, that what you achieve is most often aligned with the daily rituals and habits you do every day, regardless of what you think. You can think, for example, that you're never gonna be able to write that book, but if you have someone put a gun to your head and say, write for one hour a day, you're gonna have written a draft of a book in a year, most likely. And it doesn't matter what you believe. You could think you don't have what it takes. You could think it's never gonna sell. You could think you're a crap writer. But if someone forces you to write, you will write regardless of your state of consciousness. Frankly, I view action as the multiplier and as the upper limit breaker. But a few more examples. Diabetes. Do you think that someone can just say, oh, light and love, I believe that my diabetes is gonna go away. My doctor is wrong. No, 0% chance. What will happen is that if you change what you eat and your exercise, your diabetes can go away. Cancer patients. Do I think cancer patients should just visualize their cancer going away and not do any medical treatment? No, I think that's a stupid decision. Going back to the example of someone who wants to write books. The single most important predictor is frankly not really your mindset, even though your mindset may affect whether or not you write, right? If you don't believe it, you may not ever do it. But if you sit down and you force yourself, you will be able to write a book. And that is the law of action. That one year from now, the thing that most closely mirrors your results 
is whether or not you actually have been spending that time doing those daily rituals. That's why I wrote the book, Master the Day. The whole point being that if you want to almost guarantee that in one year your life is different and you said you wanted to start a YouTube channel, you wanted to write a book, you wanted to not be single, you wanted to get healthier or deal with some illness you have, the greatest predictor is nothing mental or psychological or spiritual. The greatest predictor is every day am I dedicating 30 minutes or an hour to some habit that will move me in that direction. And you can prove it to yourself by looking at your calendar and looking on paper. That is something I'm doing every single day. That is the single greatest predictor I've ever seen of results happening in somebody's life. Now, aligned with the law of action is actually getting better at certain skills and getting better at certain things. So in terms of taking action, you have to be getting better as a person. And for me, one of the best ways to do that is online classes and online courses. One of the programs I've used the most is Skillshare because they have categories all around for every quadrant of life, whether it's photography or fitness that you can use to improve your life. And they've put together a special package for Modern Health Monk viewers. You guys can check out right below that you can use that code on the screen for that discount that they have. And in addition, the link right below this video, the first link is for Skillshare to check out that package for Modern Health Monk viewers. Check out all of the online learning communities and programs that Skillshare has with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. So take, for example, this course called DIY Filming that I went through. It really helped me, number one, figure out how to really storyboard my video in a much more strategic way versus just being a teacher, as well as how to properly prep a short but sweet kind of highlight reel, as well as edit it, put it together, and really polish it to be a much, much better presented piece of content. So Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of these different kinds of classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions of people. Now the classes are usually under an hour and they have short lessons to help you fit any schedule. But I would definitely go ahead and check out some of the topics that you might like. All right guys, so that's what I have for you today. So don't forget these two principles. Yes, the law of vibration and the law of action. You match those two and then you take massive action towards something that hopefully excites you and your life really can change as opposed to just being, I'm gonna sit and visualize my soulmate entering my life. All right guys, so don't forget the other half. That is the yang to the yin. I'll catch you in the next video.